Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created for Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on our world scene and we focused on adding our player game object and allowing our player sprite to move around our world scene uh, by starting to add in our grid movement. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. So with the logic in place to actually move our game object for our player around our scene, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to focus on refining that logic. Uh, so currently we have our grid movement, so then that way our player only moves by grid spaces. However, we want this to be a nice fluid movement, and so we're going to want an animation to move our sprite between the two uh, positions. And so to start doing that, we're going to need to track what direction the player is currently facing, and then that way we can have the sprite face that direction. Direction. And then when we come back and add our animations, we're going to have our animated sprite face that direction and then walk towards that uh, position. So to go ahead and do this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come to our character class and we're going to go ahead and add a few new properties in order to track some of this. And so if we can come up to our uh, character config, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add in a new a uh, config option for our direction. So when we create our player instance, we want to know what direction the player is currently facing. And so uh, typically we'll start off facing down, um, but as our game grows, you can imagine uh, if we encounter a wild monster and we come back to the world scene, we want our player to be facing the same direction they were facing before. And it, like if we enter a building, we'll be facing up, depending on where that door is in the building when we enter. And so to track this, we'll go ahead and add our property and we will call this direction and this will be of type direction and then the next property we're going to go ahead and add is a callback so this is going to be an optional callback to know when our player sprite has finished uh, moving and we can go ahead and do some type of logic uh, and we're going to make this optional so that way we don't have to apply to all uh, character instances that get created. Uh, a good example of this is for our NPCs, we won't need this callback, uh, but for the player, uh, we might want to call back to know if we're in our grass after we complete our movement, uh, we'll need to check to see if they encountered a wild monster. Uh, so to track that, let's go ahead and create our property. Go ahead and add our type. And so for our type, this is going to be a function that returns nothing. And we're going to go ahead and call this sprite grid movement finished callback and like so we'll make that optional so we'll have that in our brackets all right so now if we come down to our class uh, we'll go ahead and add a few properties here that'll be protected so after our game object let's go ahead and add in direction let's go ahead and add in is moving so for our character once they start moving and we start animating between the two positions we're not going to want to go ahead and take any other input from the player and try to move the character further we need to wait until we've completed that animation. So we're going to lock the input until we're aligned with our grid. And then next, we're going to go ahead and take in target position. So target position is going to be used for tracking where a player wants to move to. Uh, so we'll have our current position where the game object's at, and then our target position is like if I press the right key, we want to check this. That would be this position here. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and do previous target position. And so this is going to be used for tracking, like if our player's moving gets interrupted, uh, we'll need to know what they previously were targeting. It'll be used for other parts of our animation. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and add in a property for our callbacks. We're going to do our sprite, grid, movement, finished, callback. And then real quick, we're going to go ahead and throw in the types for these. So if is moving is going to be a boolean. Direction will be direction, target position, and previous target position are going to be coordinates. And then finally, we'll have our callback. The final last thing we'll want to do is in our constructor, let's go ahead and assign our properties. Uh, so if we come down to in our constructor, uh, after we create our scene, after we assign our scene, we'll go ahead and assign our direction will equal to config.direction. Then we'll have is moving. We're going to default this to false. We'll have our target position. And we're going to set this equal to a copy of our config dot position. 
and we'll also do the same thing for our previous position. Uh, so when we start, um, so when we create our character game objects, they're not currently moving, so we'll just have our target position be the position they're at. Uh, so we'll have our previous target position, and then we'll go ahead and add in our callback. So go ahead and do this. Our callback is going to be equal to our config, our sprite movement grid, our sprite grid movement finish callback. All right, so now with our new uh, properties, let's jump over to our world scene. Uh, let's go to our creator player instance, and then let's go ahead and pass in our direction. Uh, so we're going to have direction, and we're just going to pass in direction dot down for our starting value. And let's jump back to our character class. And what we'll do next is we're going to go ahead and add a few getters for our new properties. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to add a getter for is moving. Uh, so we'll our constructor. Let's do get is moving. We're going to return this is moving. Then we'll go ahead and add one for our direction. So we'll get direction. And we're going to return this direction. And we'll go ahead and add in our types for these real quick. Uh, so is moving is going to be our Boolean. And direction is going to be direction. All right, so now that we have our getters, next we're going to go ahead and work on our move character method. Uh, so currently we are taking the input direction and then we are moving our game object manually uh, to the next grid space. And so instead of doing this, what we'll want to do is check that grid space to see if it is a blocking tile. Uh, so a good example here is if we try to go left, there's trees, our player shouldn't be able to move through it. And if it's a blocking tile, we won't move our character. If it is a tile we can move to, then we want to start an animation from our current position to the position we want to go to. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and use a tween. And so what we're going to do is in our move character, in our move character method, uh, what we'll do is we're just going to add a check. And we'll do if our game object is currently moving, we're just going to go ahead and return early. Uh, so if we're in the middle of our animation, we don't want to do anything else. We need to wait for it to finish. Then if we haven't returned early, we're going to go ahead and call a new method. We're going to call this move sprite. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pass in our direction to this method. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this block of code here. We'll come to the bottom of our class and let's go ahead and paste that code. Then let's go ahead and update our method name from move character to move sprite. And then real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and comment out this code here for the switch statement. And we'll come back to that. So then in our move sprite method, the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and update our direction that uh, was provided. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do this direction and we're going to set it equal to the direction that was provided. Uh, so we'll do if, and we're going to make a new method. So we're going to do this is blocking tile. Then we're going to want to go ahead and return early. And let's go ahead and make that method real quick. So we'll have is blocking tile. We're just going to return false for the time being. And so back in our method, if this is not a blocking tile, then what we'll want to do is we're going to set our is moving property true. And then that way we can start our animation. And now we're going to go ahead and we need to actually do that movement. So we're going to call another method and we're going to call this handle sprite movement. And we'll go ahead and create that method as well. All right, so in our handle sprite movement method, what we'll want to do is first we're just going to add a safety check to make sure our direction is not none. And if it is, we're going to return early. Otherwise, we'll process that direction. So we're going to do if this direction equals direction none then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and return otherwise what we'll want to do is we want to go ahead and get the position based on that direction that was provided uh, so this is uh, like in the example if we go left we want to get the coordinates of our grid space to the left of our character and so to do that, we're going to reuse this logic we had here originally for our switch statement for calculating our X and Y values. However, we're not going to keep that in this class here. We're going to abstract that to a utility class. So what we're going to go ahead and do is in our utils folder, let's make a new file and we're going to call this grid utils.js. And inside this file, we're going to go ahead and export out a function and we're going to call this function get target position from game object, position, and direction. 
And so for this function, what we're going to do is we're going to take in our current posi position of a game object. So this will be our X and Y values, so our coordinate. And then we'll also take in the direction that was provided by the player. Uh, so we'll have our current position, and then we'll have our direction. And then real quick, we'll hand add in our JS doc. Uh, so for current position, there'll be a coordinate, direction will be direction, and then we're going to go ahead and return a coordinate from this function. And then what we're going to do is we'll jump back to our character class. Let's copy this code here for our switch statement that we commented out. Go ahead and remove that. We'll come back to our grid utils and we'll paste that in and we'll uncomment it. And so in our function, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a copy of the position that was provided. And then that way we can go ahead and return a brand new object with the values that will be updated. So to do this, we're going to do const and we're going to call this target position and we're going to set it equal to our object of current position. And what this will do, we'll just it'll create a new object with the same properties. And then we can go ahead and do our switch statement on direction. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and update instead of our game object, this is going to be our target position. And so we'll have our X and Y values and we'll increment by the same uh, tile size like we did before. And then finally below our switch statement, we're going to go ahead and return our target position. And just to make it every, and then what we need to do is let's go ahead and add our imports. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and import our tile size and our direction. And these will be from our JS files. And let's go ahead and import our exhaustive guard. And that'll be from our guard JS file. All right, and then one last thing we do is we're going to go ahead and add a type to our target position. All right, so real quick in our function here, basically all we're doing is we're taking in our current position of the game object we want to check, our player. We're making a copy of that current position object, and then that way when we modify these properties, we don't modify the properties on the original object because it'll be passed as a reference. And then we're taking the direction and we're using that to determine which values we update for our X and Y position. And so we're going to go ahead and return that new target position. And so then that's how we know if we press the left key, this is the position we want to move our player to. And we'll use that target position to now go ahead and do our animation. So back in our character class, what we're going to go ahead and do is come back down to handle sprite movement. Now that we have our new function, uh, we can go ahead and get our updated position. So we're going to do const and we're going to call this updated position. And we'll do get target position from game object and direction. We're going to pass in our target position. And then we'll go ahead and pass in this direction from our current character instance. And then what we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead and update our previous target position with our current target position. And then that way our new target position will be based on this updated position here. And that way we can store our reference to our previous ones. We'll do this. We'll have our previous target position will be equal to a copy of our current target position. And then that way we have the same values. And then we'll go ahead and update our target position dot X equal to our updated position dot x and our target position dot y will be updated position dot y and now we just need to go ahead and create our tween so we're going to use our scene and we'll do add we'll do tween and for our tween go ahead and add in a delay of zero let's go ahead and add a duration uh, we'll do 600 milliseconds and we're going to target our y property and so for our Y property, we'll do from our phaser game object, our current Y position. We'll start from the same property. So we'll have our phaser game object Y. And then we'll have two, and we're going to want to move to our target position dot Y. And now we'll also want to target our X position. And then that way, no matter which direction is pressed, we're going to move, we'll update the right property. And so we'll update these to be X. And then we go ahead and do our targets. And so this is going to be our phaser game object. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and add our oncomplete callback. So we'll do oncomplete. And when this happens, we'll go ahead and do this callback. And so inside our callback here, uh, we'll go ahead and say we're now done moving. Uh, so we'll update our property. Uh, this is moving will be equal to false. 
Now then what we'll want to do is update our previous target position to be our current position. So now we're done moving. Uh, so we'll do this. We'll have our previous target position and we'll set it equal to a copy of this target position. And then finally, if that callback was provided when we create our character instance, we're going to go ahead and call that callback. And then that way we can run any business logic that we want to do um, on this uh, particular callback event. All right, and so real quick, what we're going to do is we'll come to the top of our file. Let's go ahead and clean up our imports since we moved our code. And then what we're going to do is let's jump back down to our is blocking tile method. We're going to go ahead and copy our check for if our direction is equal to none, and we'll keep it inside that method as well. All right, then one last thing we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and add in a to do uh, for our is blocking tile, and it's just going to come back and add our collision logic. Uh, so later on, what we'll do is in this method, we're going to check if we can actually move to that position. Um, and if it's something we'll collide with, we won't actually start our animation. All right, so with our changes, we should be able to go ahead and test our logics. So we come to our game scene, and now when we move our player, we get this nice smooth animation between our two points, and we lock our input between those two points. All right, with that, that actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, we'll continue working on our player, and we're going to focus on adding in our animation. So then that way, as we move our player around, they're going to face the direction of the input we provide, and we'll have an animation to have the player walking. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to complete your source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send links on your screen now.